I mean the canals of France on my solar prototype boat and I've been punching through quite a lot of ice too much for comfort and that has accidentally kind of become a test for something that the Helios 11 is definitely not designed for. As I usually say, why would you be spending time in a cold environment if you live on a boat? But here I am. I did not expect the canals to take so long. I wish I had taken the sea route very carefully though. But here we are. And staying in this town called uh, Fume is now a good opportunity for me to make some upgrades on the boat. I will install a 230 volt system connected to my main batteries. And along that we will get more heating as well as insulation. We'll get to that in another video, but now I wanted to talk about the hull integrity when I've been piercing through at least five nautical miles of ice. Usually the thickness has been three to four centimeters and uh, I couldn't really believe what I saw underneath the waterline. I still need to dive underneath to be completely sure, but uh, when I was ramming through the ice, I basically uh, put a lot of weight on the front deck with a highly forward shifted mass placement. The waterline rose up to a place that normally isn't underneath the water and I can now actually see that part that took most of the beating from the ice and there's no visible damage, not even the one component black paint that I've used to cover some of the bottom and all of the rest of the hull took no damage. I'm sensing a lot of fear related to the lightness of this hull. Many of the comments I've gotten in my previous videos have addressed this and there's a lot of fear-based limited thinking regarding this. And I want to talk a bit about the hull integrity. Here is a brief info box of how the hull is built. And because we're talking about a very lightweight boat, the impacts we're getting in waves, the impact we're getting during potential collisions, they will always also be very light. That means that uh, the Helios 11 and other similar lightweight designs are actually far stronger than your intuition tells you. I've actually hit this once on a pier accidentally when the remote controller battery ran out and I was gonna do this smooth parking and I hit with a couple knots of speed straight into a steel wall and pretty much nothing happened. I can show you the damage. There's a bit of paint damage and maybe one layer of the glass fiber took some beating. A well-built plywood and glass fiber composite is incredibly strong. I've tested it, so I've done modeling, research estimates, as well as literally trying to break apart plywood. Here's a video where I'm having a small piece of plywood, glass fiber, trying to break it with the sledgehammer and it's not easy. And based on that test and modeling with AI, I can surely say that if I wanted to punch a hole in the bottom of the hull, I would need two good hits with a sledgehammer, and uh, I'm pretty strong. So this hard bottom skin of plywood and glass fiber then becomes a real solid structure when you connect it with the supports and the bulkheads of the boat. All the sofas, all the furniture, all the beds, all the shelves, they're intelligently designed to be load-bearing. They are the boat, so there's nothing inside the Helios 11 that isn't structural and that's the secret well it's not a secret but we can call it the secret of how you can build a very light yet rigid hull and that is what allows solar yachts or solar boats to function very well we've already made it this model proves superiority of solar yachts you just uh, win in every realm pretty much except for roll comfort in anchor. Another concern I've seen in the comments is legal problems. So 
I want to highlight here that the Helios 11 is completely legal. It's registered in Finland. I've been stopped so many times by the police and Coast Guard. They've checked all the paperwork. They've checked if I have a license to drive it. In Finland, you actually don't need any permit to drive a boat like this. And that's the way I will continue doing that. So depending on the country where you're living in, it may be easier or slightly more difficult to get something like this rolling legally without any trouble. So the Halo 13, the bigger catamaran I might build, it's gonna follow the same logic. I pretty much need to pay 40 euros for the paperwork and that's it. You don't need to be afraid. As long as you have common sense, you can operate a boat, you have that internal knowledge as well as the path to legally register and operate a boat. There's no problem. You're free. You're free to explore the world. And furthermore, when your awareness and legal knowledge shifts high enough, you can invoke sea sovereignty. So now I've cleared up some of the confusion and fear around solar yachts. And this is not a yacht, but I call it a yacht because that's the life I'm already inside of. Whenever I make extremely bold claims, talking about super yacht level performance or luxury, remember, it's always into the future. I'm talking about the next model. I'm talking about the luxury yacht when all of the upgrades have been made on this one. I'm talking about crossing the Atlantic when I made some hull reinforcements, solar upgrades, engine upgrades, and improved the battery capacity by two times or three times even, putting a lot of ballast underneath the waterline. That's the Atlantic crossing version of Helios 11. That's gonna be safe. That's not gonna be a crazy adventure where you may get yourself killed. So keep in mind, I have a very high degree of common sense and intuition and that leads to me speaking slightly too optimistically about everything. It may feel that I'm talking nonsense. I'm actually speaking about the immediate future, such as the future of the Helios 11, when I make a couple thousand dollar worth of upgrades and then it's uh, good to go, then it's uh, clearly superior to any other similar sized sailing boat. It will have more cabin space, it will have infinite energy for things like laptops, phones, it will have better heating, faster cruising speeds, much greater day cruising ranges and so forth. I should not uh, highlight that even more because I think I've made it clear. And uh, now I'm excited in the next video to show you how I do these upgrades of the heating systems, the insulation, also the 230 volt electronic. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video.